All right. Once again, thank everybody. So the last few days, what we did is we said, let's deal with a real live use case. The use case is straightforward. The use case is a hospital system, right? Decided to buy some new equipment that are massive MRI and CT scan equipment, right? In the hospital system. Now, for those of us that are not familiar with that, these are huge machineries that are expensive, but because they capture personal health information of our patients, they capture uh, medical records, they capture images. So because of that, they are classified personal health information. So we are saying that before you bring this equipment to my environment, right? Don't forget it's a network, right? They will bring this device into your environment. They connect it to a network. It's like when you buy a new TV, right? At this point in time, or you buy a new laptop or a new fridge that is internet connect um, enabled. First thing is we try to connect them to our Wi-Fi, right? So the same thing for this hospital system, they use a, either use a cable or they use wireless to connect these devices within the environment, right? Whatever their story is, at the end of the day, they've connected a massive device into their network. So because of that, that is a big deal. That is significant, right? So we can't, you know, downplay it. It's really a big deal. So having said that, ladies and gentlemen, it's important to understand the potential ramification of that. The ramification of that is if we don't do our due diligence and you connect such a device to a public network or your internal network, then any risk, you are liable. And when we say liable, sometimes the fines can make a company go bankrupt. Sometimes it might become a criminal case of negligence. So this is serious stuff. And now we are talking about leadership. Like, you know, the truth is, you could be one of the leaders today or tomorrow. And I can bet you no leader wants to go to jail. I can't be making $2 million, $3 million a year. And you tell me I want to go to jail. No. Uh -uh. Um, the reason to make that much money is to hopefully use it to enjoy, not to go. So people take it serious. Your leadership definitely take it serious. Anyway, that's the story about the project we talked about. So having said that, for those of us that are new, let me just quickly recap. I'll be very quick. Today is a working session. I give some assignment. I would like us to kind of work together as a team. Then I'll do, you know, show you a video. We kind of look at the video to kind of put it in real context also. All right. So let me quickly show you the um um, for my folks that are you know new to this class, let me just quickly do a quick two minutes rundown. All right, if you didn't attend it, go back and listen to the other class. But the benefit of just to try and keep everybody on the same page for I'll be very fast on this one. Okay, so um, pardon me for the next few minutes. We'll be very quick on this one. Just five slides. Okay, we'll be out of here. All right. So this is really talking about okay, what are we talking in terms of risk assessment? Right, we are saying we are assessing the risk in my organization. We are thinking of what is the threat within the business itself. Then we identify what are the risks. So if I am bringing a new machine to the hospital system, what are the risks that we can think about? Now, one thing I'll tell you ahead of time, relax. It's subjective. So don't get mad on someone that says, well, you know, I don't agree. This is a risk. It's okay. It's the normal process. I mean, I've never done a risk assessment that we don't bought it. You know, I mean, we'll be respectful, but we will not always agree. Many times, just about open mind. The key is reasonableness. If you can tell me something reasonable, then I'm fine. It's, if it's reasonable, if it's not reasonable, then I'll say, well, I'm not sure I am convinced about that respectfully, right? But most people, if you can articulate the reasonableness, people would oblige you, right? So once we identify the risk, we evaluate the risk and say, what is the likelihood of this risk happening? Let me give a practical example. So you might tell me that... Um, I need to install a very strong, um, let's say, you know, within my home, I need to have like, you know, let's say I live in California. Oh, well, not California. I need to have foundation that could resist earthquake in Texas. Well, um, the risk is probably I, maybe. The impact if there was an earthquake in Texas is equally high. But the likelihood of it happening, ladies and gentlemen, it's fair to say I can make a case that it is low. 
because historically we've not had earthquake, right? So that's the same rationale, right? So even though the impact, if it happened, is high, you know, but the likelihood is really low, right? So that's the way people think about this in a business. People really take their time, analyze this, and get comfortable before they, you know, um, they feel they could make a case for it. So anyway, that's the gist about it, okay? So it's not a big deal. Then you prioritize the risk. At the end of the day, always remember, ladies and gentlemen, no matter how wealthy an organization is, nobody has unlimited resources. There's a reason um, Bill and Melinda Foundation still keep asking for fund because um, nobody has unlimited resources, right? So it means based on all the risk we have, we need to still prioritize the risk and say, okay, which of these risk is actually immediate? Which of them could wait later? Leadership needs to prioritize so that they can allocate financial resources appropriately. As simple as that. So no big deal, no rocket science there really. And always remember, ladies and gentlemen, all the people I'm talking about, leadership, doing their stuff, they are like you and I. Most of you probably on this call are leaders. or All of us are leaders, to be honest. Any one of you, I can make a case to say, you can attain a role today. I just give you two months of learning curve. Nobody's a dummy. It's not a big deal to be I believe that 100%. And why? Let me give you why I am so convinced. If a 28-year-old kid can leave college, lose his dad, suddenly became the president of a nuclear state, country called North Korea, and he's been holding his ground for the last 12, 13 years or whatever number, then life would make you step up. So everyone on this call, I challenge you. We are leaders already. Just remove the barrier mentally. That's all. It's not a big deal. The people you meet are the same folks you meet in your churches, in your kids' game, in Walmart. Some of them, you cuss them out when you're driving. They are the same folks, right? So don't get, not a big deal. All right. So, but these are the people that would eventually decide the priorities in terms of what we should invest in at any point in time, okay? So that's the quick snapshot of what we talked about. Then we said, what's the importance of risk assessment? I think we can't understate this. This is insane. If we don't do it, and in a bit you'll see a satire, I'll show you real quick on why it's important to do risk assessment. Many people avoid it for some weird reason because it forces you to think and forces you to start being proactive. But surprisingly, a lot of people don't do it. In many projects, people just don't think about risk assessment. When everything falls apart, guess what the auditors or external regulators always ask first? Can I have a copy of your risk assessment? And they tell you, well, sorry, we didn't do one. Ew, horrible. But that's the reality. That happens all the time, okay? So always tell people that, okay, you know, risk assessment is a very important piece of the puzzle at any point in time, right? So just some types of risk in IT, some of them are things we already know, right? Of course, we know all the threats. We know phishing campaign, somebody trying to scam you with email. For those of us on WhatsApp, you know, we know the normal drill. Please never fall for people. They will call you and say, oh, this is a call from, you know, a company. Any company they can tell you or even, you know, church group, they will tell you, oh, your pastor is, you know, or your your imam or your, you know, your um, your teacher, your coach, whatever it is he or she is, you know, they will try and scam you. That, that's phishing. They're trying to see if they can scam you. Some of them, they will send you links and they will see if they can get you to fall for those schemes. So be mindful of those. Those are a big deal. In the space of cyber, three key things we always talk about. Can we all type this real quick, everybody, if you don't mind? Can we type in CIA? CIA, if you don't mind, please just type in CIA real quick. Can we all type in CIA? All right, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just type in CIA. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Can we go further and say, now, if you're in a meeting and somebody's talking cyber, you just say, well, we need to ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and the availability of our critical infrastructure. Honestly, immediately you sound super cool because that's the core of cyber, right? So I want everybody to just type in CIA because really, if you're in a meeting and you say that, People will know, okay, you know, um, all right, you get it. Because those are the core areas in terms of enterprise cybersecurity, mostly. And there's another element, an angle to it for like plants, because manufacturing also have their cyber plants, all of those critical infrastructure. But those ones, their priority is not always confidentiality, mostly. They would think about availability. Availability is saying, 
is our network available when we need it, right? And rightfully so. If it's a power station, power grid, guess what? The plant manager wants the power to be working all the time. If it is a manufacturing for pharmaceutical drugs, I don't care about confidentiality. I just want availability. Is this system working? So, you know, that's why you can always think through it and say, okay, confidentiality, integrity, availability. Those are the key areas in general in cyber that we consider. All right, data breaches, we can all agree. Even if we don't know anything about data breach, just know it's bad, right? We're saying somebody breaches sensitive data. Some of the data that we care about are mostly, can we all type in PII and PHI real quick, if you don't mind? Can we all type in PII and PHI, please? Can we all type in PII and PHI and PHI? If you don't mind, can we all type P PII and PHI real quick? Let's see. If you don't mind, let's type in PHI and PII. PHI and PII. Oh. PHI and PII. All right, let's see somebody's uh, okay. Um, let me see. Are we not able to type? All right, let's see what's going on here. Can we type PHI and PII? You can type. Oh, you cannot type. Okay, got it. Okay, I just saw that. Um, sorry, give me a second. Okay, that's okay. No big deal. No big, but okay, let me share my screen again. Thank you all. Thank you all. No big deal. Don't stress it at all. All right, let's just go back to, you know, let me just go back to the, um, let me quickly just wrap, wrap this up then. It's okay, no big deal. All right. So other thing is hardware failure. We can agree, even all of us on our computer, if you are using your work computer, one of the most frustrating thing we see is if your hardware, you know, your laptop fails, it's a big deal. So that's enough stress. Human error, this happens all the time. If somebody uh, misconfigured their setting, that's a huge deal. So that's a big crisis in general. Okay. And in risk, anal in risk assessment, generally, we always say risk identification, analysis of the risk, we evaluate the risk, then we think of what do we do in terms of treatment of the risk? What's going to be our strategy, okay? And um, we talk about some tools in general, and we just said, what are the things to mitigate or prevent potential risk? We said implement security controls, develop disaster recovery plan, then employee training and awareness is a big deal. And for those of us that were not part of the class earlier, just go back and listen to that class, okay? Not a big deal. All right, cool. Then... We also said there are some regulations out there. In the project we are working on, EPA is a big one, okay? Because it's in the US, right? Uh, there's PIPEDA also, I believe in Canada, GDPR for European member states, SOX for publicly traded company, PCI for um, financial industry, ISO 27001 framework is also a big one people use out there. Okay, so that's just a quick snapshot of, you know, things we talked about um, in general. Then importance of risk assessment, failing to do risk assessment could be a big, big crisis for us. So we need to continuously do it. It's not a one-time thing. Risk assessment is a continuous thing for us. All right. So that is the high-level summary. Okay. Now let me quickly share a video for us. And just, it's a two-minute video, but it's fun. It's um, during World War II, Adolf Hitler talking to his generals and lieutenants and asking them why risk assessment was not done. It's just a fun satire. Listen to it and just see the concept. I saw it and I like it. So, but let me share it real quick. And um, then after that, we'll get back here real quick. Let's quickly, let me quickly share that. All right. Um, I, I think um, 
hopefully that was um, a good satire to kind of make you think a little bit more. So the key, the key concept is, the takeaway, my opinion is, he said, why didn't you all envisage this? Because you didn't perform a risk assessment. So any one of us at the minimum, honestly, if you say that in organizations and uh, you will get your leadership thinking. Sometimes they'll just pause and say, um, I think they've done it before or um, we didn't have enough time to do it. You know, now, but at least you called it out, right? Because yes, everybody always say they don't have time until there's crisis, right? Nobody has time until there's crisis. So you don't want to be in that space that, okay, now you have time because there's crisis, right? So it's a big deal. So let me show you the final thing before we do our working session. Ladies and gentlemen, please, when I put us in a working session, I need you to just take ownership, talk in the group real quick and go through the assignment. I posted the um, document again in our WhatsApp group for those of us that just joined so that you can have an idea of the document I'm talking about. So let me quickly show you. This is the assignment. Let me show you real quick. Let me share my screen. And I want us to just kind of think about it together. So this is a documentation that talks about the scenario. Hospital just acquired a new, you know, equipment. Now they need to do risk assessment, right? So this is the documentation. This is the executive summary about it. We identify the threat and the risk in general. We can agree, number one, if you bring a new machine, a risk is unauthorized access. Just like your password. Can somebody just come in without the necessary authorization and log in? That's a risk. The same thing for your MRI. So I can agree that that's a potential risk. Number two, data breach. Our data can be breached. Number three, system downtime. What happens if the system suddenly stops working? Maybe the network breaks down. Do you have a history of network breaking down? Or you use AWS, which maybe does not have an history of breaking down. Those are the decisions you are making. Data loss, exfiltration. We are saying people many times actually use flash drive, put in your devices and go away with it. Many organizations today would not even allow you to use flash drive or any um, mobile device within their system now. Is it allowed in your MRI machine? You are asking those questions, right? Don't overthink it. All of us have probably done x-ray before. But all those x-ray results, imagine somebody having access to it and taking all your information and mixing it, swapping the information of patients. Wrong diagnosis, wrong medication, a lot of potential death, lawsuit. It's crazy. We don't even want to imagine it. But this is the reality. This is what makes people think about this because... Everybody thinks it's not going to happen to me until it happens to you, really. Nobody wakes up and says, I want to be the one in limelight of embarrassing situation, right? But it happens. That's the reality of it. So that's why risk assessment is always a big deal. Compliance violation. Have you had any history of violation of compliance? Insider threat. Ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, one of the biggest threats is insider threat, meaning somebody internally working for you. If you notice an employee suddenly using the Ferrari, right or you know a jaguar um in car whatever car you know lamborghini and you know the salary you pay the employee and you're thinking uh they from a royal family that has a lot of money so in your mind you're thinking is this person indulging in what is beyond their means because potentially they can compromise what happens if a you know External agent from a hostile nation comes up to somebody and wink and give them a million dollars to compromise data. I mean, I know most of us will say no, but honestly, you never know what will happen. But if you are in debt, you are in crisis, and somebody puts a million dollars in front of you, then um, it's a different conversation, right? But that's the reality. That's insider trend. So there are so many analytics we need to look at to see people that are potentially vulnerable to insider trend. And it happens all the time. Exponage world, people use human agents to compromise data. So those are things you have to think about too. Do you do regular security check or background check on your employees? So a lot of things around that too. Fishing and social engineering, we already know that really trying to see, see if they can make you click an email or something like that. Okay. So the next thing we did now, you know, um, two days ago, we said, okay, what about unauthorized access, data breach, system downtime? We said, 
the risk is high, medium. So we talked about this already, but there are these three we did not talk about, right? So I want us to work as a group and say, within your group, I want you to tell me what you think the potential impact of compliance violation, the likelihood and the risk level for insider threat, the likelihood and risk level, fishing and engineering, the likelihood and risk level. I want us to talk as a team and give it a score. We're going to have a large group and I'll randomly select a few teams to speak. Or once we are done, I will have like maybe three, four groups to just present randomly, okay? The first four that shows their hand. So once you're almost done, have somebody within your team to present to the larger group, okay? Because we can select you randomly to present. So let me see. I think we can see my screen, I hope. Yes, okay. All right, let's see. Let me stop sharing. So all of us should have access to this documentation in the WhatsApp group. If it is not there, everybody must log on to their LMS. Just go to academy.skillwit.com, register for the internship program. All the documents are there. We don't share documents like that, but because of within our WhatsApp community, I always post it just for easy access. So you should have access to these documents in the WhatsApp group right now. So please pick it up. If you've seen the document, give me a thumbs up real quick. If you don't mind, give me a thumbs up real quick. If you've seen the documents, can you guys give me a thumbs up here? Let me see it. Thank you. Awesome. I see a lot of thumbs up. Okay. So we are good. So now I'm going to put us in a working session for 15 minutes. Please be involved. I challenge you, be involved. The goal of this whole exercise is to make us think together with other professionals so that we can see their perspective, tell us why you're scoring it high, medium, what's your, you know, kind of go through it. So it's just three, it's not a lot. Honestly, we should be done in, it shouldn't take us more than max 10 minutes to do it. But, you know, don't overthink it. We will challenge each other, argue that's okay, but it's not a big deal, okay? It's the normal thing in those kind of projects. All right, let me quickly, I challenge you also, when I do the working session, when I put us in the breakout room, it's just for 10 minutes. Don't leave, still remain. Once I click the breakout room, you will hear some silence. I need people to take ownership. Don't wait for other people to talk. Please talk. Just, you know, talk. Be yourself. Just say, hey, guys, you know, let's say um, I just find five people with me. Hey, guys, can we just talk about this? What do you guys think? Just talk about it. Go through it. Share your screen. I've enabled us to be able to share our screen and have fun doing it, folks. This is the whole essence of it. Remember, again, we are leaders. And I challenge you, sometimes get out of your comfort level, out of your shell. Talk. And you know what? For most of us, we don't even know each other anyway. So it's not like you care. And you don't even need to put your camera, but still talk. I mean, nobody will know you. So enjoy it. Let's, I want to make sure it's an experience you soak in. Use this to build yourself as a leader. And it starts from somewhere. So this might be your starting point. So let's have fun together, okay? All right, let's quickly do that. I'll put us in a group now. Let's see, breakout room. Uh, let's see. So I'll make it just seven people in each group. Okay. So um, we're going to have just seven people in each group. So don't overthink it. Let's see. We can do that real quick. All right. So let's have fun, folks. Talk to you all soon. I'll bring us back in the next 10 minutes or 15 minutes max, maybe 12 minutes. All right. So let's go.
All right. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. So we're going to take two people only, um, Dorothy and Sydney only. Please, everybody else, I apologize. We can't take everybody. I'm sorry, Samuel. So we'll take two people only and um, we can wrap it up. When we meet on Wed on um on on Wednesday, we would um, get into a different topic, but we'll do a quick quiz. I sent the link to you already, but because of time, we'll probably not do the quiz now. Uh, but let's quickly take Sydney. Over to you, Sydney. Just tell us uh, what you guys saw and uh, you know the experience. Go ahead, Sydney. Yes, thank you uh, so much. Um, I'm going to try to be very fast about yeah. it. Uh, so we looked at a compliance violation, and yes. uh, for us, mm -hmm. that is high, low, and high. Okay. Uh, the potential impact this could cause, non-compliance could cause uh, financial, reputational, and even uh, um, a lot of damages could come with non-compliance. So that's why we went for the high. And uh, again, the likelihood for us is low. Uh, I yeah. wanted to, we wanted to put it at moderate, but we like, okay, when it comes to uh, policies and procedures, some companies could just put it at the corner without implementation, but with proper training, um, that could be placed on low. And then we have high as the risk level because anything that has to do with non-compliance and especially for the environment, because when you're doing risk assessment, you have to look at it from the business standpoint. And for yeah. us, we're trying to link this to the objective of that environment, which has to do with life. So yeah. for me, we place that on high. Got it. Uh, okay. Yes. And then for insider trades, we went for high, moderate, and high. Uh, uh -huh. still stem at probably the same reason uh, yeah. because potential trades, insider trades, uh, some companies could pay attention to the onboarding without considering the offboarding. And there yeah. are instances employees just leave unannounced and there are instances you have the ones that live grudgingly. And those ones, they could leave and probably cause more damage to it because they are angered. And I Got shared it. my experience that I had as a, from my school where my school driver had to put salt because he felt aggrieved. His salary was deducted. So when he was leaving, he went and put salt in the school buses and that oh, cost wow. us a lot of money. And oh. then uh, quickly, I'll go to fishing and social engineering. Do, do me a favor. Can we, let's keep it so that other people have um, another minute, but perfect. I love those examples. Oh. Let's okay. um thank you, Sydney. But okay, I thought we were about. taking oh sorry. Okay. No, 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 no. Just give us two, that would be good. But that was great enough. I mean, I think we have okay um, because we have just five more minutes. So um, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Thank you. That's why I was thank rushing. You. Thank you. Thank okay. You, Excellent. All right. Job. All right, Dorothy, over to you. Let's take one more Dorothy, and that will be it. Um, and for those of us on the call, please, we have an information session. Feel free if you want to join, just um it will be great. You will love it, you will have a lot of knowledge too. All right, go ahead, Dorothy. Over to you. All right, thank you. Hello, everyone. Yeah. So for us, for compliance um, violations, we yeah. thought that the potential impact definitely will be high. Likelihood, likelihood is medium and the risk level is high. And okay. then for the mitigation strategy, we decided to add in addition to, you know, uh, establishing and enforcing compliance policies and procedures, we decided to add that these should be regularly monitored and reviewed, these, are these policies, right? Yeah. And for the insider yeah. threats, we, we felt that it will definitely be high, the potential impact, and the likelihood will be medium too, because, I mean, even if you're doing background checks and providing yeah. employees with these trainings, an employee can go rogue on you when yeah. while yeah. in yeah. there. So we also yeah. decided to add, uh, in addition to these controls, we should also have a data loss prevention implemented. There should I be segregation that. of duties, role-based access, and even job rotation. That way, it oh. will kind of mitigate the impact should this risk uh, materialize. And that. fishing and social engineering definitely yep. to be high, the potential impact, the likelihood medium, and then we the overall risk level is also high. And then we also talked about regularly um uh, conducting regular fishing simulations in addition to the mitigation strategies already recommended here. Got Thank it. You. Thank you very much. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, if if you don't mind, other groups, can you copy and paste it? Your copy and paste your finding like other people are doing right now. That would be great so that other people can take a look at it. But, um, you know, that's all we got for today. And um, 
on the group followers, um, I'm going to send some quiz, which I did already. We didn't have time to do the quiz live now um, because we have an information session just right after now. Everybody on the call still join the information. It's going to be good. It's for the upcoming program. Join it. Some other folks are joining already. So uh, we need to switch to that session. It's YouTube live, not um, Zoom. Zoom is for us when we do interaction like this so we can work in, in a group setting. Uh, never forget, please, ladies and gentlemen, we never call you for a Zoom ID, WhatsApp ID, beware of scammers, a lot of them out there. And um, let's switch to the next program so I can have five minutes to transition. It's still going to be very good stuff. You will learn a lot um, in the process and um, then listen to some folks that just got jobs in the program also. It will be nice, good stuff too. All right. So all we got for now, more to come. Definitely on Wednesday, it's a big topic. You need to be there. Risk assessment, I think we have a grasp of it. If you've not done the assignment, please do it. Log into the system. Keep track of everything in the system. For you to get the certificate of attendance of this program, you have to do all the things in the system. At least click on the document. If not, we cannot give you a certificate, right? So it's only fair to make sure you do it. Then we'll give you a certificate afterwards. And you feel good that you hand it yourself. All right. I'll see you all in a few minutes. Let's transition the next two, three minutes. All right. I got to quickly prepare for that in two minutes. All right. See you all in a bit. I sent the link to the WhatsApp group also. Just, just click on it. I'll be there in three minutes. See you guys shortly. All right. Thank you, everybody. Let's go.